What's up guys, Mari and Jerome here from the Bonsai Supply. Today we're visiting the Land and Gardens. Let's go. Hi, how are you guys enjoying my gardens? Well, I'm Dan Robinson. I'm the uh, progenitor of this uh, fiasco. I mean, <laughs> festival. You never know for sure just what it is. And you happen to be looking at one of my favorite old, old junipers that um, I've been working on since uh, actually the late, um, late 60s, early 70s. I collected it in the Sierras and uh, I had a friend up here who was excellent at grafting, a guy named Jack Spargarden, who has passed away now, and he showed me how to graft Shimpaku foliage on it. And so I have some early pictures of it, of course, but uh, let me just tell you a little bit about it. And so originally there was another trunk on here that came off this way which I was able to separate and turn into a separate bonsai. This was a big, solid, heavy shaft coming up here. Sort of evidence of it when it was younger. Almost all uh, ancient junipers start out with a vertical uh, shoot going straight up in the air. Whenever you see them out in the countryside, they all start out as tall like a Christmas tree. And then once they reach um, uh, maturity, they start to die down from the top and lower branches grow. And of course, they're all a little bit short of water. That's that whole process. And so those branches then grow gnarly. And the old top remains. And in this case, I carved it mostly away because I wanted to uh, perforate this so you could see into it. And so I put um, three different grafts on here and um, 
This is uh, one of the graphs right in here, and so it's Shimpaku foliage above and uh, Sierra juniper down below. And one of the interesting things about Sierra juniper is if you do um, take the bark off, which um, you get a real distinct red, very red color on the bark that's uh, hidden underneath there. So that's one of the nice things about the Sierra juniper is it's the reddest of the uh, of the bark texture type things if you want to clean your bark off. I was always accused by my grandmother of not keeping my bark clean. So, uh, but that's what you can get if you want to get into that kind of a grooming. Anyhow, what I've just tried to do with the tree over the years, I did all of this carving and um, I haven't really treated the, the wood with anything as a preservative. It's just kind of very durable type stuff. This gets water every other day and it gets fertilizer from um, about the middle of April all the way through to mid-July. And I use uh, miracle Grow. Anything with a name like that's got to be good for a bonsai. And if you mix it up with the water, it's a nice blue-green color, which also is indicative of how good it must be for the plant. Anyhow, it's high nitrogen as fertilizer, and I usually mix it a little bit hot so they get a lot of nitrogen. But th with that, you get a very vibrant, beautiful green growth on these junipers, and they seem to do quite well. This tree has not really been grown for probably five or six years, so it's quite um, random in its design. And um, But then I enjoy that particular silhouette where it looks much more natural. I kind of like the idea of the old thundercloud formation of uh, juniper heads rather than this extreme uh, flat triangular type vision that so many people impose on the juniper. So I just kind of like this randomness and it is a handsome old tree. It's probably around uh, seven or eight hundred years old. A little bit hard to know for sure because so much of the trunk has been carved away but it's just a real old guy that started out in the Sierra Mountains of California and here it's been at the Land and Gardens here since our inception back in 93 and it's still with us and doing uh, relatively well um, here in the Northwest. So that's one of my favorite um, old junipers that now is a mix of uh, Chinese juniper and uh, Sierra juniper. beautiful garden hope you enjoy it as much as we did absolutely see you guys next time